Pretty sure it's not supposed to look like that. Hey guys, I'm Theobald Hedman, and welcome to Southern Ingenuity. Well, as you already know, I've got a repair to make on my grapple fork attachment. This large tree fell across my driveway, and I had to get it cleaned up. Now, that wouldn't have been too much of a problem had it not been completely entangled in this nasty mess of wisteria vines. I mean, these things have been here for God knows how long, and some were as big as five inches in diameter near the ground. So I couldn't just cut up the tree and haul it away. I had to cut my way through a wall of those vines before I could even get to the tree itself. So I would cut for a little while with my chainsaw and then try to rip out as many vines as I could using my grapple forks and the box blade. And things were going pretty good for a while. Then I started to hear this little creaking noise while I was actuating the grapple. So I shut off the tractor to see what was going on. And to my dismay, this is what I saw. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it got bent. And yeah, I was a little aggravated and somewhat distraught about having to buy another cylinder. But it didn't bother me near as bad as it bothered my tractor. I mean, it got to him so bad that he went out drinking, got into a drunken bar fight, and someone blacked his eye. Some fella by the name of John Deere. I ordered a cylinder and it came in a few days later. And after unpacking it, I began disassembling everything to make the repair. The first thing I had to do was remove the hose guard. Now the back of the hose guard is secured to the link pin with one inch shaft collars and the front is secured to the cylinder via the tie rods themselves. The back of the cylinder's got two ports, one on the top and one on the side, and the front one only has one port. But this allows multiple ways to configure your hoses depending on what's most appropriate for your setup. The cylinder came with the front port positioned to the side, but I need it to be on the top where the hoses will be out of the way and protected by the hose guard, and I'll do that a little bit later in the video. Well, here's a little snag that I did not anticipate. The ports are different. So I have to go get another fitting before I can reconnect my hoses to this new cylinder. Well, I'm on my way to Tractor Supply to try to find some more fittings to go onto the cylinder, but I'm gonna venture out on a limb here and say that either they don't have it in stock or if they do, it'll only be one of them. We'll see. They had two of what I needed. Well, I got my new fittings and installed the first one in the front port, but I had to remove the tie rods before rotating at 90 degrees. Before reinstalling the end, I made sure that there was no dirt or debris on the O-ring that would compromise the seal. And with the port rotated to the correct position, I reinstalled the tie rods. With the new fittings installed, I swapped over the hoses and then reinstalled the hose guard mounting bracket. If you listen closely to these clips, you can hear the rain falling on the metal roof of my shop. Now, I consider myself extremely blessed to have a place where I can work on my projects or repairs and not have to worry about the rain, or the wind, the cold, or the blazing sun. But an even greater blessing is to have family with the knowledge, the ability, and the willingness to help me build such a place. And if you'd like to see more on about how we built the shop, be sure to click the link at the end of this video.
Now my grapple attachment is a custom built piece of equipment. I built it several years ago to help me clear some land. Not only does it have forks for scooping up the tree limbs and the brush, it also has a root spear attachment. And the spear is used to dig around the base of the tree to break up the soil and cut the roots so the tree can be removed stump and all. And if you'd like to see it in action, there's a link at the end of this video.